so anyway, uh, so anyway, uh, so anyway. Hey, this is Joe from Portland. I'm here with Lulu. We are going to be doing a series of informative videos to help you become a thrilled leaf owner. informative videos to help you become a thrilled leaf owner. I'm going to start with uh, some real simple basic stuff and then we'll move on to how to select a leaf, what you want to look for, and what you need in general in an electric vehicle. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to speak EV. I'm going to start with the basic vocabulary of words you'll hear all the time. The first phrase is an ICE vehicle. You know what an EV is? An EV is an electric vehicle. What is an ICE vehicle? It is an internal combustion engine vehicle. It's a retronym, I love that phrase, a retronym for gas powered vehicle or traditional fuel, fossil fuel based vehicle. It's to contrast it with the EVs. We do that sometimes. An example is a landline. We never used to call them landlines. We only did that once cell phones came into use and we had to differentiate them between cell phones, or a brick and mortar shop. Uh, we never used to call them that because there were no online shops that competed with them or that existed, so we didn't need to differentiate. Okay, so the next one is an HV battery. An HV battery is the high voltage battery, also called the traction battery, and sometimes the propulsion battery, or the big battery, and it is the battery that actually powers the leaf's motor. You can consider it analogous to the tank in a gas vehicle. There are some significant differences we'll talk about later uh, in terms of how they relate to the vehicle itself and you, but it's where the power to get the vehicle to move is stored. But the 12 volt battery, sometimes called the automotive battery or the little battery, battery that's just like in your, your ice powered vehicle, your, your gas powered car, it's the one that the, in the gas powered car starts the car up when you need to drive. Well. It has a very different role in the EV, although it does do that. It actually powers all the accessories except for the climate control. And that's because the HV battery is simply too high a voltage to power like the headlights or the tail lights or the little light uh, in the sun visor. So the next one is a watt. A watt is a measure of power or current. And it's what we use to measure electricity. What is a kilowatt? And a kilowatt is merely a thousand watts and you'll hear it all the time when you talk about EVs because they simply produce so much more electricity than would be reasonable to measure in a watt. You know, you don't say 16,500 watts or 45,000 watts. They just say 45 kilowatts. A kilowatt hour is simply a kilowatt times time. It's a measure of the capacity of a battery as opposed to the current. Okay, the current is measured in kilowatts. but when it, when it comes to batteries, what you want to know is how long it'll last, how long it can produce power or electricity. So, so a, a one kilowatt hour battery would be capable of discharging one kilowatt for 60 minutes. That's a kilowatt hour. The same battery could discharge two kilowatts for 30 minutes or half a kilowatt or 500 watts for two hours. It's, it's a weird relationship, but it's nothing to get confused about and it's to worry about. I myself still make the mistake. I call them kilowatts when I mean kilowatt hours and vice versa sometimes. So the bottom line is a kilowatt hour or a watt hour is a measure of capacity in a battery and a watt or a kilowatt 
is a measure measure of current or force that's in that's produced by something by a, by an electrical circuit. The range mile. The range mile is, for instance, Lulu's original factory capacity was 150 miles. So you could say she had 150 range miles. So a range mile is just that. It's a mile that the vehicle can go when it's charged. The EPA range or the hard range. So the EPA tests every vehicle that's sold in this country every year to determine how far it can go on, say, a full tank of gas or a full charge. It's the only objective number that you can use when you're talking about how far an EV can go. There's nothing else to work with. You have to use that number or you'll just muddy the waters. It's easy to make fun of things like miles per gallon that the EPA also does, but unfortunately, it's, it's what we have to work with. The state of health. There's two states people always talk about with EVs. The first one is the state of health. And the other one is the, is the uh, state of charge. We'll get to that in a sec. So the state of health is the percentage of remaining capacity in the battery. So when the, the vehicle's new, when it's sold brand new, it should have 100% state of health. In other words, the battery's entire medium, the entire capacity of the battery should be available. But over time, a lithium ion battery will decay. It'll degrade. What happens is the interior components will simply no longer be able to store and discharge electricity. And as that occurs, a percentage of the battery is left. And that percentage is the state of health. And it's expressed as a percentage. So if you have a 90% state of health in a 100-mile original 100 mile car that car is going to go 90 miles now that's going to be its new its new hard rank state of charge is just that it's it's how how high the battery is charged at that moment so if it's charged at 50 percent um a brand new battery that goes 100 miles will go 50 miles however if that battery is degraded until it's got say 90 percent then that car will only go 45 miles when it's charged to 50%. So that brings us to price per range mile. That's PRM. It's a way to examine the value of an EV based on how far it'll go. Because let's be wrong, let's just really, really be honest about it, okay? Uh, the range of an EV is the determinant, essentially the only thing that makes a difference in terms of the value of the car to the customer, to somebody who's buying it, so in other words, if it's a hundred, if let's say you have a leaf that has a hundred mile range, uh, it'll never be worth less than a leaf with 50 mile range. Even if the 50 mile range leaf is an SL top of the line with all the accessories and everything, the reality of it is it's still going to be worth more because it goes twice as far. So price per range mile, you simply to determine that you just take the price of the vehicle and the, divided by the hard range, and it'll give you a number. And that number is going to be, well, lately it's gone, it's, it's quite high, like over, some places it's over 200, but uh, uh, it was traditionally about 95 to 115 dollars, and now it's, like I said, it's, it's much higher now. But um, that's a way to, it's very useful if you're comparing two, lead, two vehicles, two EVs. They don't have to be the same model or make. Uh, one of them, if, if, as long as you know that hard range number and the percentage of health, you can compare them side by side and it'll tell you the uh it'll tell you really which is a better value in essence okay the next one we're going to talk about is uh another per number as in miles per kilowatt hour that's the equivalent of miles per gallon so it's a way to look at the efficiency of the car and it's critical more in many ways is more important uh in a in a leaf or an ev because you know, you're talking about smaller numbers. So, uh, it, like for instance, Lulu can store about 33 kilowatt hours. If I get four miles to the kilowatt hour, then that means in a charge I can get 132 miles. On the other hand, if I'm getting three three miles per kilowatt hour, that's only 99, and that's a substantial difference when you're talking about charging or you know getting home or doing whatever. In a single gallon of gas, you have so much more energy than a kilowatt hour stored in, in one of the batteries, that it, um, it, it it simply doesn't come into play the same way. It's not as critical a number to pay attention to. Degradation. It is the bane of EV owners, even non-LEAFs. The LEAF has a unique system, at least they call it a system, of thermal management. 
Thermal management is a uh, is an important part of a lithium ion battery's world because heat is one of the main factors in degradation. Heat degradation is caused by high, just like it sounds, high temperatures. The thing that will increase the heat uh, inside of a battery typically uh, is fast charging. Charging on a public charger uh, with 45 kilowatts or something like that, as opposed to a two, you know, a level two or one, which are the little ones that you have at home, a J1772 connector. Heat will cause a degradation over time in the battery. And then, of course, the other one is what's called age degradation. So the nature of a lithium ion battery is that it will always have some degradation going on inside of it. And that's because it's this well-balanced device with these two compounds, one of which is incredibly fragile. And uh, what will happen is over time, some of that compound or the other will uh, break down. Basically, the way it works is you pump an electron into one part of the battery and it spits an ion into the other part and the electron takes the place of that ion and sits there until you discharge it till you use the electricity at that time the electron leaves and the ion bounces back to where it was originally well that isn't a perfect process sometimes in fact it will, it will not happen the way it's supposed to. For instance, sometimes the ion just jumps over without an electron being there. And when that happens, the two, those two little parts will never function again because the ion is not there to magnetically go back and forth. It can't discharge or charge. Another example is when uh, the electron bounces the ion to the other part, but then when the electron leaves it can't go back or it doesn't go back in which case the ion just stays in the other part and again it can never function again that little tiny portion of the battery will never function again so that's age related degradation and that is related to charge level so the higher or lower the battery is charged the greater an incident of those two problems the closer to 50 percent which is called neutral charge the least amount of age-related degradation you'll have, which is why you'll see vehicles that have very low, uh, very low mileage, but have batteries that are just very heavily degraded. And the reason is that they were simply sitting a lot of time with the battery probably charged to 100 or 80 percent and just weren't used much. And as a result, that increased the amount of age-related degradation that occurred in the vehicle over time. So you want to keep your vehicle as close to 50 percent at any moment that you can. Uh, obviously, you can never keep it at 50%, but anyway, so that's, that's, that's neutral charge, and that's what you want to be able to pursue. And related to that is the Sweet 60. The Sweet 60 is between 20% and 80%, and you want your vehicle to maintain that range ordinarily. Now, if you need to charge it all the way to 100 to get somewhere, do it. It's not a problem. If you need to discharge it all the way down to 2 or 3% because you need to get somewhere, do it. It's not a problem. You just don't want to do that habitually or every day. And that's why if you're buying an EV, this is the first lesson right here, you want your daily driving to be 60% of the capacity or range of that vehicle. You want to have a car that, that lets you do it with 60% of its capacity, lets you drive on a normal basis. Fast charging. Fast charging is a DC charging, direct current. And it injects electricity right into the battery. It doesn't involve the, the other parts on the car. And it can charge in a leaf up to 45 kilowatts. Then there's level one charging, which is trickle charging. That's, if, that's plugging into a three-prong outlet in your home. And you can charge your leaf or other EVs like that. But it'll only charge typically about 1.6 kilowatts. So... In 10 hours, you'd have 16 kilowatt hours. Between those is the level two charger. It uses the same plug and adapter that level one uses. And it uses, they both use the inverter on your, on your vehicle. In Lulu, that'll, that'll charge at 6.6, but it's by load. So if you don't have enough juice to get 6.6 .6 kilowatts, then it's not going to produce that. So those are the three kinds of charging, level one, level two, and DC fast charging, which some people call level three, but, you know, they're, they're crazy. Nobody calls it that. So as I mentioned, the J1772, that's the plug that goes from your house to the car or from a level two charger to your car. Chatamo, 
that's a C-H-A-D-E-M-O, like cha and demo. Uh, it comes from a Japanese word. That's the, that's the DC fast charging plug for a LEAF and for some other vehicles, but it's the minority of vehicles. Then there's the CS, CCS combo, which is the, it's an alternate fast charging system and plug, which they use in a lot of other vehicles. Uh, and it can charge much faster than a leaf charger can, but that's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, so then the, we'll talk a little bit about some things here. Hypermiling. What is hypermiling? It's any activity that you undertake to try to get the vehicle the most or a higher level of efficiency than it ordinarily has. In other words, you try you 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 want to get more miles out of whatever you're using, gasoline or whatever. So you do certain things differently. Maybe you drive behind a truck. We call that drafting. Uh, maybe you just don't accelerate. You you there's some other tricks. We call them, all those together are just referred to as hypermiling. Turtle mode. Oh yes. So if your battery gets too low, the computer on board will limit the amount of energy that it can discharge. And they, we call that turtle mode. And it'll give you a little bit of extra time to go somewhere, but then you're done. It'll die and range anxiety. It is a minor mental health condition, mental illness, I guess, or, or, or however you want to call it. Anxiety is caused by the need to make a decision where the information you have to base that decision on is unreliable or otherwise uh, less than you would like to have. So range anxiety means you look down and you realize, oh my God, I've got so little energy left, so little uh, electricity left. Can I make it home? Should I try? Should I try to make it to a charger? These are the problems that we face as an EV driver. However, uh, I can tell you right now, there's easy solutions for that as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and uh, any issues that come up with your driving an EV or owning an EV are far outweighed by the benefits of it. And we'll talk about that. Uh, another issue, rapid gate. So in a LEAF, there's software that keeps the vehicle from charging faster when the battery is hot, very hot. And it, uh, it became, a, it really was an issue and they called it rapid gate because Nissan kept it secret in essence. <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, it is a, uh, it can be a pain if you're trying to charge typically more than twice in a trip or a day. So uh, I take this car, uh, Lulu and I, we go long distances, much longer than the vehicle was really intended to go. Uh, these cars were designed to be driven in town and charged at night. But I'll take her and we'll, we'll go down to California. We drove, a, we drove a, quite a few miles last month. And uh, anyway, um, she will, when we charge the second or third time on a long trip, she just won't charge very fast. It's clear that that's happening. So heat management, thermal management is a critical issue in these vehicles, if you, especially if you're going to try to drive point to point. And that's it. The next lesson is before you go shopping for an EV or for a LEAF, what you need to know, how the information you need about your own driving habits and self. And we will talk about that the next time. So thanks, guys. I hope you guys have a great day. And please consider buying an EV. It's the most important decision. It's the most impactful choice you'll make as a consumer, as a U.S. consumer especially, uh, in your life as far as the environment is concerned. Thanks very much, guys. Have a great day.